Hi YouTube, this is Patrick and uh, I'm feeling kind of sick so I'm sure you can hear it and probably see it. So uh, I'm going to do this review a little differently. I'm not going to edit it because I just I don't really feel like it. So it's going to be kind of me talking and then looking down at my notes which I have here. Um, just yeah because otherwise it's going to take a while for me to go through it. I just really I'm not really up to it. Um, but anyway, uh, this is my review of Dexter Season 7, Episode 3, and it was another solid episode. It was, um, it was just, uh, solid and pretty much just like, kind of, like, satisfying, basically. And, um, I don't think it was as strong as last week's, but it had a great finish to it. And, um, yeah, I really, really loved it and everything they're doing so far. Um, again, there was no really, LaGuardia didn't really do anything. But uh, that's going to get into the Bay Harbor Butcher thing um, next week. Then Quinn, Quinn's stuff, you know, his, uh, the one thing I think good about it is that at least other people know about that he's talking to the stripper. And, um, you know, at least they're calling him out on it. Everyone's aware. It's not like this big, big secret. Uh, I, I guess except to the mob, unless the stripper's in on it. But uh, I didn't like how they're making Quinn just like a complete idiot and just being the one that's buying the whole suicide. It's really just, they're really only doing it uh, so they can make Batista look better, I guess. Um, but Quinn's line to the guy uh, that tried to bribe him was very funny. Uh, yeah, he just told him to go fuck himself. That was funny. Uh, Batista, though, Batista had a good, <clears throat> good episode. I'm trying to talk louder, sorry. Good episode. He, um... You know, he was just, he had, he was a good, he was good police work, he was funny, uh, he has a specific hat he wears to funerals, which is a darker one, which I thought was funny, and, um, yeah, just everything with the interrogation, all the stuff at the crime scene, it made him look smart, made him, you know, he was a little grown up, because Quinn offered him to come with him, you know, to the strip club, and he was just like, no, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm done with that stuff, so, some maturity, I guess, finally, and, um, yeah, he's not really doing much this season, but it feels like he's doing more than normal because what he's doing is actually watchable, I suppose, in the last couple of seasons. So I definitely like that. And uh, where am I going next? See, I don't even know where I'm going next. Hang on. Oh, uh, Hannah McKay had a one-off scene with Dexter, and she's... Um, they're going to get into her stuff, I guess, starting like next week. She's a bit of a problem. She's going to be a problem for Dexter, you can tell. I think she's basically going to be like Lila without trying to burn children down. Hopefully, that's what she's going to be. But, um... I don't know, I like her. I'm intrigued by her. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with her. And, um... I like how they're slowly building like her up a little bit uh, as like an issue. And, um... Who knows, maybe she's actually going to be the real problem this season. Uh, instead of Isaac, but um, I guess we'll find that out. And uh, speaking of Isaac, he had another strong episode where he was, um, you know, I mean, he was, again, he was funny and menacing and, you know, all that stuff. Him at the um, the club when the guy started insulting Victor, he kind of got up and the, the camera made his eyes look like he was like a maniac for a second. Um, but... Uh, he was obviously smart because he figured out that, you know, it's most likely just Dexter. But, um, and he's going to come after him now. And, uh, yeah, I've said this before. I, I, I like Isaac. And, um, he's definitely gay. I called it last week. Doesn't mean I have, you know, gaydar. Shut up. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I'm kidding. He... Yeah, I think he's a fun. I think he's like a, a fun villain. I know I'm rambling. Uh, let me see what else do I got. Oh, I I forgot the uh, the suicide scene. He um, he was just so nonchalant about the whole thing, as it was just like something that had to happen. He just didn't really even care that much. He was just like, "Yep, yeah, you know, this is what we have to do." And you know, you, I don't even we, like what an asshole. Like I don't even know if he's gonna even give that family any money. I hope so. But it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't, so. Um, yeah, but I'm looking forward. He's going to, you know, it looks like he's going to really go nuts from next week's preview. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Dexter's got a, uh, a pissed off 
you know, vengeful Ukrainian Titus Polo after him, and that's that's that sucks. That's not someone you want after you. So yeah. Then as far as uh, the Deb and Dexter stuff, the Deb stuff was um, like the scene early on where she talks to him in the the hallway in the police office, or outside in the hallway. I mean, and then in front of the car after she you know interrogates Spitzer. That um, they're just good scenes, and I like how Deb like isn't like as she mentioned Trinity. I didn't like the dream. Dream sequence was kind of cheesy, but. Um, she mentioned, you know, Trinity, so it looks like they're going to just, like, kind of, you know, dwell out these little, these kills from Dexter over the past couple of seasons, episode by episode, and, um, you know, basically called him out that Rita's death was his fault, and uh, because of who he is, so uh, it was a good give and take throughout the whole episode, and um, Deb's reaction to, uh, you know, Spitzer and just being pissed off, like, it was actually good character development and a strong, just strong episode for Jennifer Carpenter, well done. Uh, as far as Spitzer goes, the whole thing was just, like, it was pretty awesome. Uh, first of all, it was, like, the guy, I wanted to see that guy dead. And uh, it was something that could appear to be, like, filler. Like, they only, you know, they took two episodes with this one random guy that doesn't really tie into anything for the season, but they made it about Deb. They used it to have Deb accept Dexter more, pretty much. And um, that, you know... It, and also the fact that even if that's convoluted, if you want to say that is, it's just, you know what, it was so damn entertaining that it didn't matter. And Dexter, first of all, seeing Dexter lose a fight is something we're not used to, and he did. Um, the whole maze sequence, the whole strobe light thing was, you know, kind of crazy. The camera was a little annoying in the episode. It kept zooming in and everything like that. I don't know. But otherwise, it was, you know, it was fun. And Dexter killing him, Dexter taking him down was just pretty much hilarious. Just the way he put the stay sign on there in the graveyard, and he was just messing with him. It was all, um, yeah, it was just all really well done. I really liked it. And uh, the kill scene was one of the best kill scenes I've done in a while. And, uh, yeah, just him yelling, like, fuck bat at, bat back at him, making fun of him. And uh, the whole cremation thing, him putting the slides on his body, just everything. It was all, it was all just really, really satisfying. And uh, the last scene with Dex and Dev was well done, well written, well acted. Michael C. Hall was fantastic. Um, he always is, but sometimes he stands out more and you kind of forget, like, wow, he really is good. And, uh, yeah, that's what happened this episode. So they're still on a roll, and, um, it looks like the Bay Harbor Butcher stuff and the Hannah McKay stuff is really gonna start to take over now, uh, with Spitzer and Lewis out of the way. I'm guessing Lewis's blood is still gonna come back. They keep showing it in the preview. Someone mentioned that in the comment last week. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, I might have forgotten something. Sorry. I'll talk about it in the comments. Um, yeah. All right, guys. I will uh, talk to you next week. Later.